Okay, so we've established three datums, side, an edge, and an end. From those, date, date, those data, we can measure uh, the sizes as shown on our cutting list. Now, take, take, don't take any of those dimensions too literally. This is more about learning how to handle the tools than get something absolutely to dimension. If you end up with 10 mm end grain to shoot down on this, don't do it, seriously. There's no, there's no meat, there's no benefit to that. Just, we're just cleaning up. But I'm going to show you the principle, in principle, I'm going to show you how to do all the different cuts that you're going to uh, need to dimension a piece like this. So this is our board on the cutting list. So any sort of list of materials for a woodwork project is called a cutting list. Um, and that's a very simple cutting list. So for our board, we've got a width of 220. So I'm going to measure from my uh, face edge, datum edge, 220. And the easiest way to do that is to use your um, combination square. So set that on 220 on here, lock it up with a little knurled nut, 2 edge pencil, mark that line there, mark that line there, and I've got, got my line to work to. If you really want to impress your friends, you can just take that line down like so. <laughs> or use a ruler. Right, don't take that line all the way around. We're just going to plane down to that and, and check with the square to make sure that it's, it's really important. Okay, so pop that in there and get a convenient plane. And we're going to do it with four. If you want to, you can have a play around with the wooden planes as well. I've got some wooden planes in here. Uh, this is a way of building up the kit without spending too much money as well. And uh, those are both sharp, they should be good to go. They are there for, for the hoop. Because they're kind of difficult to use, I tend to set my wooden planes up um, and, and leave them. So that's set up for a heavy cut, that one's set up for a fine cut. This is set up for a heavy cut and it's got a fence on it. It's a little bit too big. Did I show you this last week? I did, didn't I? No? No, I think so. It's a little bit too big for this. What this is designed for, and this is a Frankenstein plane. I made this out of two, two old planes. And uh, uh, when, when you're doing big boards like these on these benches, and I've got a lot of these to do, your machinery tends not to give a good enough finish. So I always hand finish before I put them together. Um, and it can be quite hard getting them dead flat and dead square all the way along a long board. So that's what this one's for. And uh, it's a really, really nice thing to use. So have a go, have a play if you want. I'll leave these out. That one's for a slightly finer cut. So if you're interested in the old, the really old ones, the sort of stuff, these are nice to have a mess around with. Um, and like I say, I mean that, the metal, you can get the metal equivalent of that. So that would be a number eight frame with a fence, with a side fence. And even second hand, you're probably talking five, six hundred quid for that, and more for, for new than that. that. These were both given to me, so a couple of hours work, and you, you got something. It does the job fine, I mean, I use that. This, that's not just there for show, not because it looks pretty, that actually does the job. So, anyway, back to, back to the just, just Plane that down to your line and make sure you square it, and then that's, that's pretty much guaranteed to be right. There's a cheat for this as well. There's a shooting board. It's designed for end grain, but it'll do ordinary grain, it'll do these edges as well. It won't do them very quickly, but it will do it very accurately. So if you, if you want that, you can just tidy your cuts up. With this, and I've just put an edge, just sharpen that. There's a nice, nice fine cut. If you if you do a lot of YouTube, and you'll see all sorts of stuff about people getting excited about how thin a shaving they can do. I get quite excited. <laughs> it's kind of irrelevant, really. Um, it shows a well settled plane. It's it's the, the finish that matters. It's what you get in here. But if that's really really fine, it tends to be that that was pretty good. I think I think uh, there's a lot of fuss about Japanese planes. I think, to be honest, we're getting our Western planes nowadays doing 
our, our spine and cut. Um, I'm going to show you how to sharpen. So probably next week we're going to start on the sharpening stones and we'll get really, really super razor edges on. Okay, so that's the width. That's our width down to 220 hopefully. Probably half a mil on that. I'd take another half a mil off. Check it. Always check your work. Make sure it's right. I've got a little bit to do on that. So imagine I've just done that. Another half a mil off there. So for the end, for the length, we've got 250. So we can do, do the same sort of thing. Just measure that. See what we've got. Put a mark on it. And we can just square that across. So square that. And that's a really fine cut. There's not much left on that. So I could just stick that on the shooting board and, and, uh, and take that off. If I've got a long way to go, let's say I've got 10 mil to go or more, I'd saw it first, saw it about two millimeters away from that line, and then, then uh, shoot, shoot down. You don't want to be uh, shooting 10 mil, you'd be here all night. If you've got, say, let's say you've got five mil, let's just imagine that we've got a little bit more, say it's something like that. It's going to be difficult on this end, so I'm going to flip it around. Imagine this, imagine this is the end that I'm working on. I've made things very complicated by putting those circuits in there, you just got to sort of feel <laughs> So imagine this end is this end and I've got all that much to take off. It's not enough to saw, unfortunately. Um, I, if I started to try and saw down that, I'm probably going to just skip out of the, out of the cut. So I've got a plane, there's no way around it, but it's going to take forever in there, so there's a cheat. And I don't necessarily want you to do this. I think once I've shown you how to do this, it's worth you knowing it. You might never have to use it, um, but I don't want you to necessarily do this now. It's just a lot of work, really. It's going to take a while. And, um, we want to move on to the next, the next thing, really. So this is more demonstration purposes. What kind of demonstration purposes are we? So let's say you've got a lot of timber to take off, you haven't got a shooting board, combination of those two factors. What you can do, instead of putting a spelch block block on the end, you can put, you just get that, see, and you film it and get the phone at the same time. Continuity. So, it's not a great way of spending your time, but it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty quick. The lie on the plane will do it better, and I'm already halfway down to that line, so it doesn't take quite so long. So that's something just to remember if you ever need it. One more thing I'm going to show you. Um, is something you can do with these mocks on vices. So you see that the, we're going to use these quite a lot over the course. Um, something that I've only just worked out that I can do with these is that they will serve as a, a sort of mini, well, an alternative shooting board. So if I put this spokes block in here, this, one, this is going to need a spokes block. Drop that back. You need either an assistant or a million hands for this. But uh, I just line that up about there. So a spokes block is just something that takes the hit from the end? Yes. So a sacrificial, a sacrificial piece of timber. So it breaks rather than the timber. So this is a spokes, spokes block. Hopefully it's going to fall out. And what I should be able to do you now is just play the way up here with pretty much anything. And again, it's doing you know similar job to what we were doing over over there with, with just the angle on, but. When you're playing on end grain, it's, it's very resistant, it's very tough, and it's kind of hard to keep your plane straight. So, if I was to go, I'm getting breathless, I'm not going to do all this, but if, uh, if I was to go all the way down, then these two, which are square and flat, would act as guides. So they're going to keep everything nice and flat as well. So that will work, it's a bit, a bit more awkward to set up, but once you're using it, because you are like that, it would work, it's quite an, efficient, quite an efficient shooting board. And if I, if I did, if I used a, a better plane for this, something, probably, 
probably you've worked out already most of you that the line would really just make a difference. You can see that's cleaned up really nicely and by the time I got down to here it's going to be dead square because this stop here is square. It's going to keep the whole thing square and it's going to be nice and square that way because of these. So over the course of the time you're here, we're going to use these quite a lot and uh, probably find them quite useful as well. So uh, maybe you might invent even more ways of using them. So that's how we do the dimensioning in terms of length and width. Last thing we're going to do is to take this. So if you've started playing on the other side of your, of your board, I'm going to show you, uh, show you a different way to do it. Anyone see the square up there? I'll have to keep on that square. Oh, yeah, so uh, we've got a flat, flat side on here, flat and out of twist side here. So we could make this flat and out of twist uh, and still have it a little bit you know, out of parallel with this. So that might be you know, all looking really great, but it's kind of sloping down that way. It might be 25mm at that end and 28mm at that end. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a marking gauge and we're going to give ourselves a reference from our flat side. So there's a few of these around the workshop and there's also that's a marking gauge and there's also a few of these. these are, that's also a marking gauge. So we've got um, a couple there, there's this one as well. So there should be plenty, enough for everybody. Um, these are a lot easier to use, so jump on that if you can. These are a, a sort of modern version of that and they're just way better. And basically you've got a movable stop and you've got an edge that cuts. This is a wheel on this one. It's a little spike on that one. The spike tends to follow the, the grain of the timber and move around a little bit. I'm going to use both to show you how to use either. But if you're going to buy one, buy one of these for sure. Way, way better. Probably a bit cheaper as well. So, what I do is I, if I was going for exactly 25mm, I would get my ruler and I would set this up to 25mm, lock it with the knurled nut, same process with this, set the point to 25mm and lock it. Well, that means I'm taking all that, all that off. So that's a, that's a lot, I don't need that. So for the purposes of this exercise, um, just find the lowest spot on your board. So the point at which this side and this side are the closest together. And take about a mil off of that. One, so I've got that, can you see that? It's about one millimetre less than the low point. So I'm just working my way around, not putting any marks on, just moving that around and making sure that I actually did get the low point. And I, it looks like I have. That looks pretty good. So, I'm going to drop it into a vise. <coughs> vise has an extra pair of hands. And carefully keeping this nice and tight at that edge, just put a nice clear mark. I'm going to take that all the way around. This is what we're going to paint down to in a minute. Use the hard one. So just set that up, just setting it into the existing line, so you're messing about. Now this tends to follow, it does follow the grain. So what you have to do if you're going to use one of these is just roll it into the cut, so you're actually cutting with it, and roll it into that cut nice and lightly, put a nice light cut on. So it's resting on here, this is running along the timber. I'm pushing this nice and tight up to the timber, up to the face side. Just roll it into that cut. Gives you a slightly more easy to see mark. So it's a bit hard to get straight. Do that again. Just roll it nice and light. Gradually getting heavier and heavier. So now we've got a cut line at exactly whatever dimension that is, all the way around. Drop your pencil into that line to make it a little easier to see. OK. 
Okay, so I've got a mark to play into. I'm playing down to that. Okay, so it's a similar process to, uh, to when we were playing down to the to our, our winding six. Same, same. We're doing the same thing with the plane. Just how we check the cut is different. as I get down to that cut. Basically what I've got is the side of this timber looking on here. So here's the side of the timber and I've put the cut like that. And I'm playing it down to that cut. So when I get to here, that edge is going to get all feathery. Can you see that? So watch out for that. You should, you should see, uh, without having to look sideways, you'll, you'll see that you're getting down to your line. So when you get down to there, um, and any, any given spot, stop painting, stop painting there. Um, but I'm not down to my lines over here. So, a bit more work, you see it's just starting to feather up there. This side is tight. Okay, slightly different on here. Just starting to pick up on those edges as well. And if your pencil line's fairly clear, you should see a slightly darker line as well. So you're seeing that I've got a line here, here, and here, telling me I'm down to the depth of cut that one. A little bit more to do. And again, that's pretty much down to my lines. So I've not done that very uh, carefully, just, just take it down somewhere near. Mind you playing right in. And now, now I'm going to take that perimeter. So that perimeter is pretty much level, and I'm going to take it all the way across. A little bit more careful, I like to cut. I'm watching what I'm doing a bit more. down to here. That's good. That's what I want. See there, I haven't gone far enough. Still feathery, still quite a lot of damage. So, put some pencil lines on because I'm happy with that edge. Don't want to go any further there. So, So just be careful not to take any off there. That's pretty good. So I'm going to take the finest cut that I can manage with this and then leave the rest of the smoothing plane. So So a few overlapping cuts and that's nice and flat. It's to the dimensions that I wanted. If I needed to go to 25 mil, and I've obviously had a little bit more work to do, but the principle is the same. So we should be able to get something that is quite smooth, 
nice and square and to the dimensions that we want. I said, I'll keep you busy for a bit. A cup of tea time for me, I think. <laughs>